So a couple of years ago, I did this video. And you know that I love handheld games. So when there's a new piece of hardware on the market that plays cartridges that have tons of classic games on them, my interest is peaked. And now let's take a look at the Evercade. Yeah, okay, let's get that out of here. So one of the first videos on the channel that actually ever really did anything for me. And it's kind of shameful to look at now because it looks like a hostage negotiation, but I gotta be honest with you, everything I said in that video is accurate. I loved this machine right here. This is the Evercade. I think it's fantastic. And I was kind of on board for everything that Blaze Entertainment was doing. I was all in on the handheld version of the system. I really liked what they were doing, but what really intrigued me is when they announced the Evercade Versus, their version of a home console. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing a good old fashioned unboxing, taking a look at everything that's inside this box, and then we are gonna be taking a look at the games that the system offers, how it plays, and how it's gonna look on your TV. Let's get over to the table and take a look. Now this is something I've been excited for a while. This is the Evercade Versus Premium Pack, the first home console from Blaze Entertainment. I picked this up from Castlemania Games. You can go to them at castlemaniagames.com. And if you've not bought anything from Ryan in the past, I can't tell you how much I urge you to do so. Because honestly, the dude's a godsend for retro gaming fans, and he started carrying modern stuff as well. But we are here to take a look at the verses, so what do you say? Let's pop this package open and find out what's inside. First up, the console itself. As you can see, this has a flip-up door like a classic NES with two slots for cartridges. You've got four USB ports in the front and a standard HDMI out on the side, along with a micro USB power port. I do wish it was USB-C, but in the grand scheme of things, that's a minor complaint. The console does ship with a micro power cable, as well as two controllers. Doesn't have a power brick, which is kind of becoming the norm in things now, but, but it does take any standard five volt power brick from a cell phone, so you should be good to go with that. I don't really mind the feel of the controllers in my hand, but I don't really love them either. Fortunately, the system will allow for USB inputs and a huge variety of third party controllers are supported that you can utilize on the system. Got a link to that database, giving you the full layout of what controllers are supported down in the description. The system also ships with two games, the Technos Collection Volume 1 and Data East Collection Volume 1. You notice that these are in the purple packaging, indicating that they're from the arcade collection, meaning these are gonna be different versions than the ones that ship in the red packages. So you're getting arcade ports here as opposed to home console ports. But something I really do like is that the red package cartridges for the original Evercade handheld will work on the Versus as well, with the grand exception of the two Namco collections. So I just wanted to walk you guys through the initial setup process here of the Evercade Versus. So love the splash screen. I love the background music that plays as you go. It's got a very vapor wave kind of 80s synth theme to it. And I really appreciate that. But when you launch the game, it is a Wi-Fi enabled console. So it's going to prompt you to input your network settings and your password. And then it's going to prompt you to download a firmware update. And I actually really like that over the handheld version because the handheld version, you had to go through a whole process of connecting it to the machine, finding the firmware update on the Blaze Entertainment website. It's not like it was difficult, it was just extra steps and this one handles it right off the bat. The download takes no time at all, but I will tell you that when it goes to install the firmware, it's gonna be throwing some yellow text on an Evercade versus splash screen, and it will look like it's gonna hang for a little bit. And I got a little concerned at this point thinking I had toasted my system, but just be patient, all is well, it will continue, it will proceed through, and then you will be taken to the main menu. So as you can see here, this is the interface with two cartridges installed. It is going to give you all kinds of different games on there. The star actually takes you to the game of the month feature, which tells you about the particular game that you should be playing that's featured on a particular cartridge. Then in settings, you're able to set your display, your scan lines and your shaders. And yeah, Gary, I'm sorry, I went with subtle scan lines on this one just because they're retro games. I think it does make the pixels look a little bit sharper. And I like the different bezels that you're able to have on the sides here. I think it's a nice little change. I especially love the logo legends. I kept the Evercade Neon, but having the different company logos on there I think is really cool. You are able to set up a different theme. You have dark, the neon one, or light. I don't know why you would ever do light, but hey, if that's your thing, go for it. You have sound options, which are great. The background music and the sound effects, you're able to set your network information here. Accessibility options, so you can actually change the high contrast mode to make it a little bit more easy to look at. Your language options are right there. You're also gonna be prompted for your language in your initial setup. You can do a system update there by looking for different things. You can actually configure your controller to do any changes that you might want if something's a little bit easier for you a particular way. There are credits here as well for the different cartridges that are available. There's credits here for the people that develop the system as well as a secret code. So let's go through and take a look at the different games that are available on the two cartridges that ship with the console. You can sort this by showing all of the games from all cartridges, by showing all the games from one particular cartridge, the second cartridge. All right, now we're gonna hop into Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. And the question of course is, are you a bad enough dude 
to rescue President Ronnie. And I would like to say that no, I'm not, because I'm very bad at bad dudes, but that's okay. If you have ever played bad dudes on the NES, this is definitely a bit of an improvement over that situation. It's a classic side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's a very fun game. Now, it's not going to be anything that's terribly exceptional. It's a fairly straightforward game, but it is a lot of fun. And i got to be honest with you, I think it looks great. It runs perfectly well on this Evercade versus... And I love that we're getting the arcade versions of these games. I think that's really awesome. Next up, we have Battle Lane Volume 5. And I didn't really enjoy this game. This one is a motorcycle combat game, and it's a one-hit death. And you're going to get hit a lot. I mean, it's a, it's an arcade game from 1986, and it feels like an arcade game from 1986. Like, this feels like it was designed to just munch quarters. And, yeah, it's... It's ridiculously hard. I don't know that I will ever really go back to this one, but it's still neat to have because it's something different than anything else on any of the other cartridges. The The fact that it is a one-hit death just... Yeah, no, not not my thing, and you're, you're gonna die a lot. Like, there's twitchy arcade games out there, and then there's this game, which is just to another level of twitch. It's just, it's just not my thing. Next up is Blockout, uh, also known as 3D Tetris, and it's, it, well, it's not also known as 3D Tetris, but this is totally 3D Tetris, and this one is really clever. Now, I had seen this before, but I'd never actually played it, and I thought it was really fun. Like, actually having to move in 3D space was challenging, but it wasn't so challenging to the point that it was something I didn't want to keep playing, because I thought it was really clever, and once I actually figured out what the hell I was supposed to do, and... You know, it's just like Tetris, you're supposed to make a line, but in this case, you actually have to make an entire, like, base for something to clear out. Once you do that, the game's great. You're actually able to move things around, you figure out what the actual shapes of the different blocks are that are going to be falling, and you're able to make them drop faster to get things in place to actually, you know, clear things out. I really enjoyed this one. I like that the different levels turn different colors so you know exactly how high up things are, and yeah, I thought this one was a lot of fun. This is a very smart game. Next up, we have Breakthrough, and this is another vehicle combat game, and... I don't know. I mean, it's pretty neat. It's definitely interesting that it's a side-scrolling vehicle combat game, which I don't think I've ever really played before, at least in an arcade. Like, i played some console games like that, but never an arcade version of it. And it's pretty clever. It's difficult. It's very hard to play. I haven't really figured out all the mechanics of it, but it's definitely something I'm going to take another look at. Like, you'll, you'll see I crash into the rocks. I couldn't quite figure out how to jump over them. And then I tried to just roll over them like the tank, but I'm not a tank. I'm a Jeep, so I blew up. Okay, up next we have classic arcade burger time, and I feel like I'm talking about burger time a lot this week on the channel, because I've talked about it on a couple of videos, but I really enjoy burger time. I think it is a wonderful game, and this is one of those signature arcade games to me that I think everyone needs to play and needs to enjoy, and it's all about bottlenecks, it's all about positioning, and it's, again, it's one of those games that was just meant to eat quarters for people, and it, I mean, it does it admirably well. Like, I find it incredibly hard to do, but... It's just such a classic, simple, wonderful game that I can't help but love it. I really love that we have new versions of Burger Time popping up, like Burger Time Party on the Switch is a lot of fun, and being able to get classic versions of Burger Time on the Evercade is really cool. This is a wonderful game. All right, next up we have Chain Reaction, and Chain Reaction is Money Puzzle Exchange. Like It's one of those just fantastic, simple games where you're going to be grabbing pieces, putting them back on the board, and if you match up enough of them, they're going to cause connecting pieces to disappear. It's as simple a game as you can possibly get, and it is just a metric ton of fun to play. I love games like this. Money Puzzle Exchanger is one of my favorites. I think it is an absolutely brilliant title, and this just feels like the next level of Money Puzzle Exchanger. And I couldn't help but have fun with this. I actually played this one for a really long time when I was doing the footage testing on this. And it's just one of those addictive games that you just want to keep going back to and keep playing. It's kind of remarkable in that regard. Next up, we have Darwin 4078, a vertical shooter, and this one is super hard, but this, oh man, I so I love arcade shooters, I, they're just so much fun to me, and being able to get one that, I, I've never actually played this one before, I'd never heard of it, and it is really, really clever, and it's really well done, it's also, like I said, unbelievably hard, so if you're into shooters and you're looking for something that's going to be a challenge, and it's going to give you a difficult time playing, and it's something you're going to want to just keep going back to because of how challenging it is, this game's for you, man. Like, this is such a wonderful arcade game, and it's not a frantic shooter like we get in a lot of modern releases. It's something that's a little bit more methodical, a little bit slower. So I think with more opportunity playing it, the muscle memory is going to fall into place, and I'll be able to get a little bit further than I did, but just initial first impressions, I really enjoyed this one. Next up, we have Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, and I'm going to be honest with you, really, really preferred the NES version of Double Dragon 2. I, I love Double Dragon 2 on the NES. I didn't have a lot of fun with the arcade version, 
Now, I'm one of those people that has never played arcade Double Dragon before. It's never something that I've really ever seen out in the wild, never had any desire to try out. It's just not something I really had a lot of fun with. It plays very similarly to Double Dragon 2 on the NES, but it's just, I don't know, there's just some kind of a disconnect here where I just did not enjoy it as much. It's definitely more difficult. Uh, the NES version of Double Dragon 2 is significantly more forgiving. This one, though, is is a little bit hard. But, I don't know, I, I'll, I'll definitely come back to it. I'll definitely try it again. I think it's probably just a matter of getting the timing right, but, yeah, I don't know. It uh, just didn't click for me on this first go. Now, Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone. Holy cow, that's a hot mess. This is not a good game. This is bad. I would have been mad had I actually spent quarters on this one in an arcade because it is just not fun. The animations are stilted and choppy. The gameplay is not terribly fun. It's just, this is one of the worst Double Dragon experiences I've ever had. I do not like this one. Gate of Doom, also known as Dark Seal, is something that I talked about a couple of days ago with the At Games Legends Mini. It was on that console, it's on this one as well, and this is just such a wonderful hack and slash adventure. You're able to choose from Knight, Wizard, Bard, or Ninja. I went with the Knight on this one, just because I'd never played as the Knight before. And it's just a really clever, straightforward, isometric hack and slash. This is the type of game I think of when I think of a classic arcade game. This is the thing that would have caught my attention as a kid. And it catches my attention as an adult just because it's so well done and so much fun to play. It's challenging without being so difficult that you're not going to be able to complete levels. But it's still hard enough that you're going to be putting some extra quarters in when you play it. And the beauty of the Evercade, of course, is that you don't have to do that. You're just able to play the game and go. I really enjoy this one. This is one of the more clever games on the console as far as I'm concerned. And I'm super happy this is included in the pack I purchased. Next up, we have Lock and Chase, and I know Lock and Chase from Heavy Burger, which is a game I play on the Switch. I'd never actually played this one, and this one is pretty cool. This is, it's straight up, it's a Pac-Man clone, or maybe Pac-Man's a clone of this one, I don't actually know. But you are playing as a burglar, and you're going through collecting all of the money and trying to avoid the police. And as you do, doors are going to open and close, and you're able to use those to your advantage to avoid the cops. And yeah, it's really cool. One of the things I really like about it is once you collect all the gold pieces that are on the screen, the game doesn't just end. You have to keep moving. You have to get out of the maze to be able to successfully get away. So it's not as simple as Pac-Man where it's just like, I've got all the dots. Everything's ready. Let's go on to the next level. No, you actually have to get out. And I think that's really clever. This is this is a really neat game. I, I love games like this. Maze games are super fun. And this is a really well done one. This is one that I'm, I'm really happy is on this collection. All right, next up, we have Mania Challenge, a wrestling game. I didn't think this one was very fun. It looks good for what it is, but I, I don't know. I, I want to spend some more time with it because I think there's probably something, some promise here because, I mean, arcade wrestling is a lot of fun, but I don't know. I just, I just couldn't get into this one, and I don't know why. I had a hard time determining when my opponent was injured. I had a hard time determining where my health level was at. Like, when I got pinned, I didn't actually necessarily think I should have been, because I didn't feel like I was at the point where I was... I had been injured enough to be pinned. And I guess maybe it's just getting more familiar with the game, but I don't know. It, it looks good. It's something I want to spend some more time on, but initial first impressions were not terribly positive for this one, but I'll, I'll give it another shot. <laughs> Minky Monkey is interesting. I don't dislike it, but I don't like it, because it's not... Like, this, this to me feels like Great Value Donkey Kong Jr. Like, it's just, you know, you're, you're trying to complete objectives by moving fruit up or down on the different ropes that are on the screen. And as you do, you're going to have other monkeys jump on, and you're going to have to avoid those. And, I don't know, it just felt like the controls were really odd to me. Like, you know, having to move up and down was really weird. I didn't, I don't know, it just, just this just wasn't for me. I didn't really enjoy this one. I'll, I'll try it again somewhere down the road, but, ah, I don't know, just not my thing. Mysterious Stones was really cool. So you play as not Dr. Indiana Jones. I mean, clearly you have a beard. Indy doesn't have a beard. And as you're, you're basically, you're going through and you're exploring hidden tombs and going through and collecting different artifacts and trying to find your way through this really interesting maze of different rooms and different types of rooms and different kind of themed areas. It's a very interesting game. This is one that I, I really enjoyed the idea behind and I want to spend more time with because... It's very challenging. Like, the, the further you get into the game, things get a little more frantic. And I really like that in an arcade game. And this is one I definitely want to spend some more time with. I really dug this one. I think it's a very smart game. It's very hard. But it's definitely something that, that has my attention. And it's going to be something I come back to over and over again. 
Was Sly Spy ever released on a home console? Because holy cow, if it was, I would have eaten this thing up. I love this game. This was so cool. Being able to change your security clearance code was really cool. This game is just really clever. Like having to do a skydiving scene where you're shooting people as you fall. The motorcycle fight scene was great. Like th this is like the most schlocky action movie in video game form that I've ever seen. It's perfect. I loved this one. This was so much fun to play. The Combat Tribes was really interesting. This is a really fun beat-em-up game. You are an absolutely massive character on screen. You're beating up all the different gang members in New York City in the far-flung future, and, like, it's just the type of game that you want to play. It's the type of game you want to pump quarters into. Like, it doesn't get better than beating guys up with a motorcycle, and that's just cool. It's a really fun game. I think the animations in the game are absolutely hilarious. Like clocking the guys together and like smashing their heads together like coconuts, Rowdy Roddy Piper style is awesome. It does a lot that a lot of beat-em-ups don't do. Like like kind of leaning into the cartoony nature of what a beat-em-up is was a really smart decision. I, I really enjoy this one. Next up we have Tumble Pop and this is kind of what if Luigi's Mansion was a platformer and I really liked this one. I've never played this one before. I'd never heard of it before. And the idea is you're sucking up bad guys and you're shooting them at other bad guys and, and using them as weapons. It's very much like picking up things in Luigi's Mansion and shooting them at the ghosts and stuff like that. I don't know. I just really dug this one. I think it's cute. I think it's clever. I think it's fun. It's the type of arcade game that I wish I would have found when I was younger because it's, it's really fun to play. There's some neat mechanics involved where you actually have to watch how much stuff you have in your little vacuum canister because if you overfill it, it will explode. And, and you'll you'll die. But it's, I don't know, this one's really neat. Tumble Pop's a very clever game. Next up we have Wizard Fire, aka Dark Seal 2. And this one's just like the original. This is so much fun to play. It's a really well-made game. It's another isometric hack and slash, and it is just a lot of fun. The game looks great, it plays great. It is a wonderful, like, kind of acknowledgement of D&D &D and high fantasy, and it's just a ton of fun to play. If you like hack and slash games, if you like isometric adventures, if you like D&D, like, there's so many boxes this game ticks that I think you would be well served to check it out if you like any of those things. Definitely a fun game, great graphics, fun combat, and just, like, so much loot everywhere. Like, things just explode in treasure, and I think that's always ultimately satisfying is getting something like that, so definitely check this one out. But I hear you say, Jay, what about the old Evercade games? Like, is my old Evercade worthless? And the answer, my friends, is no. Your old Evercade is not worthless because this will play almost every single old Evercade cartridge. Like I mentioned, you can't play the Namco carts. It's just not going to work. But I've got here, I've got the Mega Cat Collection and Jalico Collection 1 in here. And you can play all of these games. We're going to take a look at a couple of them real quick just so you can see how they look on the big screen of the Evercade. And we will take a look and see how they perform. Up first, we have EDF, one of my favorite horizontal shooters, a fantastic Super Nintendo game. It looks great. There's so many cool customization options you can do by choosing the different weapons in the game, and it is properly difficult. So if you love shooters, this game is for you. It is a wonderful addition. And the best thing about the Evercade cartridges is that they're not expensive. You're able to pick up these massive collections of games. There's usually eight to 10 games on each collection, and you're gonna be able to just increase your collection exponentially by picking those up and it's just well worth it. It's such a wonderful ecosystem to be in. That's my favorite thing about the Evercade, is that it's just everything feels right, everything works. Up next, we have Bases Loaded from the Jalico Collection, and, I mean, look, Bases Loaded is great. This is one of my favorite NES sports games. It plays just as well as it did when you were a kid. It's a little bit difficult. I mean, the perspectives are a little bit tricky to figure out, but the gameplay itself is really fun. And then we have a Steinax. I played the arcade version on the At Games Legends Mini the other day, and I wanted to show off the NES version as well, because I really enjoy that version. That's actually my preferred version of the title. And I just, I think it looks great. It's, it's something that I have fond memories of playing as a kid. It's something that still plays well as an adult, and I just really like this one. Then we have Tanzer. Tanzer was a really interesting side-scrolling kind of shooter. It's, it's very fast-paced. You kind of, you almost kind of dance through the levels like you're bouncing everywhere as you play and i think this game just looks and plays wonderfully i love mega cat i think they're just like such a boon for independent developers and it's just such a fun game it's weird don't get me wrong it's a weird ass game but it is a lot of fun to play i think you can probably tell what my final thoughts on the evercade verses are but let's get back over to the chair and we'll take a look and kind of review what my final thoughts are 
So my first impressions of the Evercade Versus really shouldn't come as a surprise to everyone based on how much I liked the original handheld. It's a superlative machine that answers all of the problems that the original handheld has. Multiplayer is built in with the four USB ports that you're able to plug controllers into to play your multiplayer games on. Pretty much every single cart works in this system with the exception of the Namco carts. You pretty much have one-stop shopping here for all your Evercade needs. It's a spectacular little console that does so much and does it so well. The games that it ships with are fantastic. Getting the arcade games onto a home console to be able to play them on a per picture perfect emulation like we're getting here is a treat. I cannot wait to see what Blaze Entertainment and Evercade do next because honestly, where they go from here is only going to be up. The machine is fantastic. It is an absolute must buy if you are a retro game fan and you want to have things on physical media. And do not overlook the original Evercade either. Having this as a portable handheld is a wonderful thing. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on the Evercade Versus, as well as your thoughts just in general on these kind of emulation consoles at home. I really dig this one though because of the physical media and I want to show you guys something real quick. Each game ships with a full color manual, so you actually get a write-up and a description of how the games control for each game that ships on a cartridge. Not too many people are doing that right now. I think Blaze Entertainment and the Evercade platform should be applauded for that. Please hit like, please subscribe down below if you're new around here. And hey, if you dig the work I do, consider becoming a channel member or a monthly Patreon sponsor like the wonderful people you are seeing on screen right now. Patrons and channel members get ad-free early access to videos for a donation of as little as $1 a month. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me as we take a look at and unbox the Evercade Versus and we take a look at the games offered on the two cartridges that ship with it. Till next time, folks, I've been Jay, reminding you to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.